human resources part of it plays right. a key key role because I remember prior to I think after the war before Shangri-La came um, there was a set of uh, uh, pe you know people who came to this country to check and see what kind of services hotels provide in Sri Lanka and and they understood that it, it was not up to the international standard the the four star the five star which internationally is claimed is not provided here despite the fact that we keep calling them uh, five star hotels or, or not uh, and they had to completely rethink how we, we we get people here we can't import people from abroad we had to get these resources done uh, how does that address into you know in creating more investor confidence because uh, when an investor is looking at he will be looking at the human resources part of it if he has to bring people from abroad that's a costly uh, matter yeah. but then again if he can't find the right people to do the right thing the expertise uh, w what kind of impact does that have Manish, I think th that that was perhaps quite true in 2009 because when the, the war was after the war, if you look at the tourist arrival, it was about 200,000, 300,000, if I remember right now, it's about 2.4 billion in 2018. The, there's a tenfold increase. Many new uh, hotels have come in, many new chains have come in and trained the people and all that. But I think you, you, but you hit a very important point. Because a country like ours, an island like ours, which we don't have like India and Bangladesh and Pakistan, we have 1.3 billion people, 180 million or 220 million people. Our strengths, we have to play for our strengths. So we have one of the highest edu meaning, uh, uh, educated workforce or youth who are highly literate, 100% literacy, almost 70-80% computer literacy now with uh, almost 100% uh, digital literacy. So that means you have a trainable workforce. So what we need to create is we need to create the avenues to train these people in disciplines what we need and make sure that we create them a good career path. So university system is one. Right? So I've talked about an ICT as given example, expanding the seats and all that is important thing. Not just expanding the seats, making sure the curriculum is updated. So one of the things that the president has done is to get the committees in to make sure that the curriculum is future proof. That's the first thing. Yeah. Right? So that's very important. Secondly, that is the new talent pool. What is the existing talent who's, who has not been employed, gainfully employed? Right? Otherwise everyone's lining mm -hmm. up for a government job, right? So the question is then retooling them. And I, there was a program that was started last year to say that, okay, any arts or uh, language graduate, you can take a two-year program to be skilled as an IT graduate. So that's another mechanism. And it doesn't have to be provided by the government because you have so many avenues now online, you can retool yes. yourself. I mean, back in the day, in the late 80s, I taught meaning programming myself. I mean, in, in that those days, there was hardly any computers also, mm -hmm. right? What I'm saying is, if there's, if there's a will, there's definitely a means to do it, right? Then the third part of it is, is bringing foreign universities into Sri Lanka. If you look at the uh, last March when I put down kind of a framework and I discussed with the president in terms of how you double the GDP in the next 10 years and what are a couple of things that we need to do in orchestration point of view, I looked and said like from a BY point of view, at least need four five private universities coming in because we have 12 to 15,000 people going abroad to study. They can study here and then they can go for the last year. What disciplines mainly? So mainly it's the sciences, that's what matters. Uh, let's leave medical at the point and the technology point of view because if you want to move from somewhat of a manufacturing to a service level economy, you need to get the technology part very right. Then the last part is the VTA and the youth vocational training. And that is really critical. So I think there was a lot of effort that put by um, then VTA chairman Damita Vikram Singh and the, the new chairman as well to make sure that you introduce the right programs, ri right curriculum and build that talent pool. And we also don't have a mechanism, like if you look at Australia, you can go to a, a you call TAFE, right? You can do a vocational training. Yeah. At a certain point, you can come back to the university system and further study. Yeah. We need to also create that. We need to think progressively because talent we need to allow the talent to migrate above, up, and bring in efficiency so that we mm. get more output from a certain amount of people. And that is critical. So that's where like people like companies like HCL also will matter because they come and take people from school leaders, they train, they equip, right? It's a work study program. So you work while you study. And once you're tooled, sky's the limit, right? 
That's it. And uh, at the end of the day, it is the well-being of the society at large. So that's what I think, if you look at the education system that way, we will get to that point. <laughs>